Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ultimod 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? You might be asking yourselves, what are these? These are gardens from Pam's Harvest Craft. Oh, you get a cactus. <laughs> nice. We have spice of life in this mod pack and the more types of food that we eat, the more hearts we will have. And you should always remember that me likes hearts. Am I hungry now? Yes. Two more hearts. Now it's four. Anyways, what is the plan for today? Well, I want to get into Astral Sorcery. The problem with this mod is that whenever I want to do something with it, I'm like, oh, I have to make multi-block structures and I'm kind of lazy. And I always postpone it until the end of the series and we never get to do anything useful with it. But if today I manage to get the Iridescent Altar, I'll be very happy. And maybe we can finally start using this mod. But first things first, we need to make a parchment and make the Astral Tome. In this mod pack, we get Oko Marine by sifting sand inside a waterlogged sieve. And the reward is a constellation paper, which is a Vitus. Oh, it's two. I wanted a Vitus. Thank you. Now that we have our book, we have our constellation, we need marble. And for some reason, marble is just stone with bone meal. Okay. Since we also have the pedestals mod, let us make a marble generator. Really? <laughs> I got the quest now. One marble bricks, pedestal, and the cobblestone generator upgrade. Nice. We're getting marble. You might notice that in Astral Sorcery we have different chapters. And the way that we unlock new chapters is by making the crafting table of each chapter. The first one is a luminous crafting table. And there you go, here it is. And thankfully in the quest lines, they will give us a rock crystal, which is very useful. This mod used to be gated behind the laser drill from Industrial Foregoing. But if you don't really want to do that, you can just get a crystal. This one is a collector crystal and with this we should be able to get star metal. How much can you hold? Weird. Anyhow, let us continue. We get our resonating wand and we are going to use the rock crystals in order to make two light wells. We don't have enough starlight. Where's the sun? Oh, it's over there. I'm assuming in the meantime, we try to get more aquamarine. We have plenty of starlight and we can start crafting. There you go. Our first light well and we should start making liquid starlight. And just to make it slightly faster, we make two. And by the way, what is this collector crystal, Armara? I know about Armara, right? Oh, we can use this. Nice. One good thing about this mod pack is that after you get your first liquid starlight and get a few lenses, you should be able to make your own rock crystal ore. There you go. And now that we actually have it, we can start making the starlight crafting altar and go to the next chapter. We should also get a few relays so that we can boost our starlight. Yes, that is the structure. If we put a lens on top of the relay, we get plenty of starlight. And I'm going to use that starlight in order to upgrade our altar which unlocks the chapter of attunement. Now we can actually start moving this to a more permanent location. We have the starlight crafting altar. I did make a new island and I did make the multi-block structure for it. So what we have to do is to just put it in the center and you should be okay, yes. And that is going to be the site of our attunement altar, but for the moment, we need to craft a few items. Oh, and by the way, don't mind the cobblestone. Everything is going to change. Cobblestone is the cheapest thing that I have, so yeah. If you guys remember last episode, we made a combiner from mechanism in order to get ores. And the ore that we needed for today was iron. Maybe we should make a little bit more. Just in case. I was checking and the collector crystal that we got is Armara and that is one of the constellations that was given to us. So if we manage to make a linking tool, we don't have to wait for nighttime ever again. Which we can't. I have to wait. At least in the meantime, I can get some iron. Also, we're not doing that great on iron, so maybe we should sift a little bit more gravel, eat some food and be happy. Thank you. We still have a few minutes to kill, so maybe we should make this. Because I always think that you should use your time productively. Okay, it just turned into nighttime and we should be able to craft it very soon. Or maybe we should at least boost it just in case. Yes, we can craft it. Perfect. The linking tool. So our first order of business is to try and get some star metal. And since they gave this to us, we should be able to just link it. There is absolutely no way of or doubling it. It's fine. Now that we have access to star metal, we can start crafting the attunement altar. We just need to link the crystal to you. You're not doing great. Let us do this again. Are you doing good? Yes. Because it was also linked to the iron ores over here and I didn't know how to unlink them. I think this is the central block. No. I was going to say that I have absolutely no idea why it's not working and then I realized I missed the column. Yes. Now it's fine. We cannot do attunement right now and we have to wait for night time, but there are a few things that we can do. One of them is trying to get infused wood, which we just have to convert it into planks 
and use it in order to make a star metal cutting tool. Uh, we don't need all of you, we just need one. I'm so happy that they gave us this. The other item that we need to craft is the looking glass, which we're going to upgrade it to a telescope. One more thing, I'm assuming if we get a little bit more relays, yes, 16 should be enough. Then we can just convert some of that star metal into star metal dust and get ready in order to upgrade the altar to the celestial altar. Of course, during nighttime. Fun fact of the day, you cannot see stars whenever it's raining. But it's okay, I had to sleep through the night so we don't get any phantoms. That is a Vetus. And if we put it in our offhand, we can put the relays. You go over there, here and here. Can I see the light? No. Oh, and by the way, I just noticed, we got mobs. Oh, we got a wolf. Anyhow, those are not very important. Let us upgrade the altar and by that, unlock the next chapter. Now we need to start making the iridescent altar. Do we have chickens? Oh, yes. You're not a chicken. Finally, some eggs. We have one perk point to spend. This one. It's not gonna be amazing, but you know. For the iridescent altar, we need the resonating gem. So basically, I need you. Oh, I have to modify the structure. I forgot. So I have a good news and a bad news. I'm going to start with the good news. The good news is we have our altar and now it's fully functional. I also had to extend the platform by a little bit because we're going to have the starlight infusion altar and that gave me a lot of perks. We're now at level 9. The bad news is we're out of cobblestone. This guy gave me like 2000 marble and I changed it back to cobblestone but it's very slow. It's okay, we can get cobblestone relatively easily, we just make a few cobblestone generators and we should be fine. For the moment, let us get the infusion altar. Oh, that is the linking tool. This is my wand. And just in case you're wondering, we need the infusion altar in order to make the resonating gem, in order to make the iridescent altar. We need four. Although, you might also notice that we need a celestial crystal. Oh, you reach level 10. Okay, that's fine. Anyways, I was going to try and say that this is something that you guys taught me and I had no idea this is an option. But apparently if you put iron underneath, add starlight, and drop the rock crystal inside with a stardust, you will get this cluster, right? And it will take a very long time to grow. But if you link it with this, it will be incredibly faster. And it is. So cobblestone generator tier 5. Yep, why not? Oh, this is relatively fast. It's faster than the pedestal. Well, actually it should be because that's the only job it has. You are fully grown. Nice, we can harvest you. I hope, yes. I know that after today, some of you guys are going to tell me, Lush, you are speedrunning the pack and maybe you should go a little bit slower, as you always do. But you should remember something incredibly important. Look around you. Yeah, it took me a stupid amount of time to get all of these. But at the end of the day, I just have a fancy crafting table. That's it. We have not done anything useful with Astro Sorcery and we just made the infrastructure. And for me that was the whole point because by the time that we get to this stage in Astro Sorcery, we're at the end of the series. And I'm hoping that at least this time we can start doing something useful because it's just episode 4. Anyhow, let me clean things up, get another Celestial Crystal and I'll be right back. Well, I might have gotten slightly carried away but uh, this is the result of my cleaning up. You might notice that I'm not a huge fan of white so this is why I try to cover it as best as I can. Besides, I think this color palette is going to be more suitable for this area. We are going to have Botanio over here, Ars Nouveau, and I don't know, there is also Mana and Artifice. Basically anything which is nature themed, we are going to put it here. Anything which is evil, goes on the other side. Talking about Botania, I did manage to get a little bit into Botania, nothing too fancy. We just have a few endoflames and we are generating a little bit of mana. And I did not have a place for our pure daisies, so they're over here. There are a few things that I want to craft using our altar and since it's almost night time, maybe we should start. Our crystal has grown and we just have to attune it, I guess. Oh, it's not out tonight. Are you jerk? You are out tonight. I can see you. I really don't understand this, but it's okay. I wanted to attune it. I can attune it now. And since I have a few resonating gems, why don't we just invest it in a collector crystal? I hate the rain. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, inventory management is a slight issue. The recipe on its own is not working. I had to manually put it in, but I think we can craft it, right? Yes, we can craft it. Nice. So you come with me. You go up there. And how much starlight are you going to give me? It's not that much. I think for the moment it's not the worst thing in the world because later on we can make a structure for it and amplify its effect. Now that we have consumed the one we had, we need a new one. I wanted to do something functional with Astro Sorcery for today and then I thought, okay, let us make a mantle of the stars. And then I remembered, there is a mantle which lets you fly. 
Visio. The problem is that although I have made one mantle of the stars in my life, it was in Enigmatica 2 and it was part of a crafting recipe, so I absolutely have no idea how the mantles work. And then I went to my own discord and someone actually explained to me how it's going to work. I need to unlock this perk. Visio mantle grants you flight instead of elytra gliding. So that is what we are going to work towards. And for that, we need a fishing rod. Cause I need to make a constellation paper for Visio and it requires a fish. It is obvious that there are other ways of getting fish, but I think this is the easiest way. And by this, I mean fishing. This is so fun. Yes! A salmon. Why am I continuing fishing? That's the only thing we need. Of course, we also need some rotten flesh. We also need some feathers. And I think that's it. Oh, and by the way, rotten flesh is for making leather. And we just need string, sugar, and ink. And obviously one parchment. Why do you need so much starlight? It's just a constellation paper. Runescribing recipe. I have absolutely no idea what it is, but we're going to buy it. Oh, it's turning into nighttime. Perfect. You know, they say collector crystals cannot be next to each other. So what if I put this one slightly further away? Oh, we get more starlight. Good. This shall be crafting with some assembly required. So feathers, sugar, string, and the fish. That's it, right? Yes. We have discovered Visio. Actually, now that it is nighttime, can we craft the mantle as well? You need star metal, stardust, feather, and one ender pearl. I'm being very tolerant. Trust me. Can I push you down? Yes. We also need to reset our perks, so I need to make a shifting star. You just hold right click, right? Yes. My light fades away. Anyhow, let us try to find Visio. I have a feeling that you are Visio. I don't have to reattune myself to Visio, do I? Here we go again. Oh, do I need one more fish? Yeah, I need one more fish. <laughs> okay. I attuned myself to Avitas again because we only need 15 points in order to get creative flight and getting points in 1.16 is relatively easy. But the crystal that we need in order to craft the mantle, that has to be attuned to Visio. You are? Yes. As you know, if you come to the crafting recipe, it will tell you that you need Visio. It's just that I need one more fish. Did my fishing rod despawn? Yes. Oh, we got it. Am I being lucky? Yeah, we do not have enough starlight and what can we do? We have a collector crystal, but we did not have enough starlight in order to craft a mantle. There is a multi-block structure that you can make in order to amplify the power of the crystal, but that also did not give me enough starlight. Then I thought, okay, then maybe we should get back to the basics and add a few more of these lenses and relays so that we get more starlight. The problem is, I have an OCD and the entire place was white. So what did I do? I noticed that you can actually put them underground and they still function. Now we have enough starlight and we can craft it. We have creative flight. I hope. Yes, okay. No, we do not have creative flight because I have to unlock that perk. But this is perfectly fine by me because I did manage to get 18 levels. I think now we have it. Yes, finally. I can fly. That is great. I should definitely explain something. So this is creative flight, but for a limited period. It will drain and you will fall down. But whenever Visio is in the night sky, which tonight it is, it's unlimited. You can also increase the duration by unlocking some of the perks and getting some of the gems. And I think if we also make a ritual for Visio, that should give me unlimited flight within its radius. Yeah, you see, Visio is gone and we are losing power. One more thing that we should do now that we have access to a little bit of mana is to do some inventory management. We just need the hand of the ender, a mana tablet, and a band of mana. We don't need a stupid amount of mana, I think for the moment, that is enough. That should let me open the hand of the ender, which is basically a portable ender chest. Finally, my inventory is clean. Also, while we have a little bit of time, maybe we should get our trinkets from Botania. Let me craft a few ruins, and I'll be right back. So I have gathered some of the ruins and some resources and let us start. We are definitely going to start with the Rod of the Lands. This is basically free dirt. Obviously the Rod of the Depths, free cobblestone, Rod of the Seas, which is basically a bucket, Rod of the Shifting Crust, you know for switching blocks, the Sojourner's Sash, so that I can run a little bit faster around the base, and of course the Benevolent Charm, just in case I mess up and there's a creeper. I have been trying to make a very small structure for a greenhouse and then I noticed something very interesting. So this is the rod of the land, right? You can place dirt. The dirt is not free because it costs a little bit of mana, but the thing that I discovered is that if you have your builder's wand, notice that I have no dirt on me, I can do this. Which is really nice because the builder's wand is not compatible with Botania. And obviously just to make it look nice, we're going to have vivid grass. 
Yes, I would say it's not the worst. We can maybe have one over here and here. The facade that you see in front of you, I'm calling it a facade because it's just literally one wall, is going to be the site of our greenhouse and we want to have a few projects inside. One of those projects is Supremium. Actually not Supremium itself, Insanium. Because for some reason somebody decided that we need it in very large quantities in order to craft a few items. At this very moment we are getting Inferium from sieving and we are also getting it from our mob farm in an ender chest. So how do we want to do this? We want the Master Infusion Crystal. Because this one has unlimited uses, this one has a durability. Although I think we need a little bit more Inferium. It does not have a stupid recipe and I think we have plenty of Inferium in order to make a few Supremium. We need the Supremium Gemstone which is relatively cheap and we have the rest, okay? Very good. We are left with 6. I have made a crafter from RF Tools which is tier 3 and we are going to provide it with patterns so that it will make us Insanium. Although one thing that you should remember is that all of them have to go to the internal buffer. So Prudentium, Tertium, Imperium, Supremium and obviously Insanium. I should be able to craft one Insanium, right? Yes. Therefore the final recipe is just going to be a block of Insanium which will go to our applied energistic system. Oh and by the way, I did make four more phytogenic insulators because these guys are amazing. I'm not going to use it for mystical agriculture but you know, for getting cactus, sugarcane, even berries. It's very useful. I went up ahead and installed all the machines because it's nothing super complicated, it's just basic item logistics. We have a crafter from RF Tools which is going to make us Insanium blocks and it is getting its Inferium from this Ender Chest which will be later on supplied by our mob farm, sieving and also mystical agriculture. And the results will go into another Ender Chest which is hooked up to my ME system. We also have 4 Phytogenic Insulators which are getting water from this sink, Phytogrow from this barrel and whenever I want to process something I just put it inside these bins from Mechanism, they will be processed and they will go into this Ender Chest which is hooked up to our ME system. I have also made a few upgrades. We are going to use only one because we are not generating that much RF anyways. And let us see if it works. So I put oak and you will give me wood. That is fine by me. I'm guessing the only thing remaining is to just cover the cables. That's it. And I had to make a few facades from Xnet because uh, that plank that you see down there is the roof of our sieving area. So I could not go lower than this. But with facades, you will not see anything. I made an advancement. Oh, level 25. I get more perks. Actually, that is good because I wanted to unlock this one and we are very close to it. Items dropped when mining or slaying monsters are directly transferred to your inventory. We just need one more. And there you go. I think it looks clean and neat. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.